Hello guys, welcome to Noah's Tech Info. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to install and configure FreeCX. So without further ado, <coughs> let's begin this tutorial. Alright, so first off I'm going to obviously, I'm obviously in Google, I'm going to type in download FreeCX. And I'm going to click on the first link here, download FreeCX V18, Windows and Linux Client. Next, I'm going to click on over here. Make sure that you uh, are logged into your uh, FreeCX account, if you do have one. Well, then I'm going to click on Downloads. I'm going to click on the Linux V18, uh, sorry, V16 uh, Linux Debian ISO. I would use V18, but for now we're just going to use V16. And it might cover V18 uh, a bit later down the line. So what we're going to do now, we're going to put this ISO onto a hypervisor, and I will let you know as soon as I'm ready. Okay, so now we're in my hypervisor. Uh, this is Proxmox, by the way, if you're interested. And uh, we're going to uh, install 3CX now. So um, let's do that. Okay, I'm just going to call this uh, system uh, FreeCX for NTI. Domain name, we don't need one. <coughs> Good to go to English, United Kingdom, British English keyboard. Right now, I'm going to make a root password. We're going to select guided use entire disk. And finish partitioning and write changes to the disk. Yes. Now it's going to install our, um, our system. The base system, as it says. Okay, so now it's just booting. And so I'm just doing the free CX installation, huh? <laughs> so you see now we have either the free CX version of 16 or free CX SBC version. So for this one, we're just going to use the free CX version 16. And click OK. Okay, of course, now we need to accept the license agreement. Yep, just tap on OK. <laughs> now it's going to reboot the system. Okay, so um, now we're greeted with the uh, configuration tool. Uh, you can either run uh, so you can either configure your system using a web browser or a command line. Uh, in our case, we're going to use a web browser. So we'll hit 1, and you can see we now need to go to this IP address. Uh, so I'll uh, see you when I get there. Okay, so we're now in the uh, FreeCX installation um, window. And uh, in order to go and get your license key, if you remember when we downloaded the, uh, the ISO earlier, we're now going to go over to Subscriptions. And we'll see uh, our license just here. If you don't have your license, you'll need to register for it. Unfortunately, I don't know how to do that. Uh, well, I probably do, but I have not done it in a very, very long time. So you can have to excuse me on that one. Uh, but your license should be just here. Uh, I'm going to copy that and paste it straight into my system. And now we're going to make a username. going to call it admin, password. <laughs> and yeah, you want to detect your public IP address. Well, it will detect your public IP address, and uh, you want to have that as your public IP address, so yes. Uh, in our case, we're having a dynamic IP address. 
Okay, I'm just going to enter a name. Um, in our case, we already have a domain, so I'm just going to do that myself a bit later, but I'm just going to call this the NTI 3CX, oh, 3CX test. Uh, my domain group should be Europe, uh, United Kingdom, 3CX.UK. Okay, and obviously these are all the uh, ports you want to port forward if you're having your 3CX uh, instance uh, accessible from the outside world. However, it's probably a bit more secure to access it via an, OP, uh, an open VPN channel or something like that. But um, <coughs> we're just going to use this uh, locally, so we don't need to port forward anything. If you do, you can either port forward that or just use a VPN to get into the system whenever you need it. Uh, yes, this is the default uh, network adapter. We are going to choose this for in our case, because uh, our system is local. If it's not, you want to use your uh, fully qualified domain name. <laughs> and now it's just going to process our fully qualified domain name from 3CX, which is the thing that we set up a bit earlier. Okay, so now we're going to choose our extension length. Uh, personally, I like to have four digits, just because uh, that's the one I use the most whenever I set up a PBX. Uh, the admin address, admin email address. Uh, so obviously, that's the email you want to have. Well, it says it all there, so yeah. Uh, so we need to select our country and time zone. Uh, this, these are your country codes for calling. I'm obviously going to select uh, United Kingdom, if I can find it somewhere. Um, United Kingdom, and obviously our time is uh, well, just a standard all time, which is London. Okay, so the operator extension I'm going to choose is uh, extension 2000. First name is operator, last name is NTI. Email address we'll leave out. Voice mail number is six 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 six. We'll leave that as it is. Oh, has to be that. Well, in that case, I'll use my email address. But you don't have to have an email address there. You can just, you know, obviously make make a fake one if you really wanted to. Uh, yes, that's all right. Uh, I want to have the UK English prompt set in my case because obviously I want to have the UK accent. Uh, now it's just going to create RPBX in all of its glory. Okay, so our system is now ready. So what we're going to do now, we're going to manage it uh, using the fully qualified domain name. Actually, in our case, no, we should be using the... Um, we're just going to copy this, paste it in, and instead we're going to replace it with our IP, uh, internal IP address. And I don't know why I'm doing this, but there was something that I used, I used to do in uh, older versions of FreeCX that were a bit weird when you try to go in between the management console and the user interface for other users. Uh, so I'm just going to do this copy and paste technique here. And hopefully... Yep, okay, good, we're in the managing console. Okay, so admin and the password that you created. Why not? Okay, and uh, we're in. And there you go, you can install the free CX app application. Uh, that we'll do a cover a bit later. And here we are. We are now within the uh, system. And you see we've got our extensions there, we've got SIP trunks, we've got messaging, digital receptionists, and what we're going to do, we're going to cover this all one by one throughout the series. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to comment, then please do. If you want to subscribe, then also subscribe as well. Uh, also, be sure to check out my um, Discord, Instagram, and Twitter, which also are the links in the video description. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. <laughs>